Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. In my recent videos I showed you that Overwatch as well as Battlefield 1 now have less lag at a tick rate of 60Hz than Counter-Strike Global Offensive had at a tick rate of 64 when I last tested it early this year. In the comments of these videos many of you asked why an updated test of CSGO where I should also test on a 128 tick server and not just on one with 64 ticks. So after 3 weeks and a bit more than 60 hours that I spent on research, tests and the creation of this video I can finally show you the results of these tests. But first we need to talk about a few basics. Let's start with the ping. Now what is that and where does the term come from? If you've seen the movie The Hunt for Red October then you might remember that scene where Sean Connery gave the order to check the distance to the US submarine with one active sonar ping. The way this works is that your ship sends out an audio signal which then gets reflected by other objects in the water. And on your ship you have microphones which then hear that reflection. If you then measure the time between sending the audio signal and receiving the reflection then you can calculate the distance between you and the object. The ping that we talk about for network connections is pretty much the same thing. Your device sends an ICMP echo request to another network device like a game server, which then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your device. Now when you measure the time between sending the request and receiving the answer, then this gives us the ping or round trip time of the data. So the ping tells us how long the data has to travel through the copper and fiber optic cables to reach the other device. And the longer it takes the data to get to its destination, the bigger the difference between what we see on our monitor and what the other players see on theirs. Which is what we call lag. So when I jump then this information takes some time to reach the server and then the other client. With short distances between the players this delay or lag is also very short. However the bigger the distance between the clients the longer it will take until they receive an update on what is going on. So the higher your ping the more you will lag, which means that you have a bad experience. But it's not just the player with the high ping that suffers. Depending on how strong the lag compensation is in a game, the high ping player can also give the low ping player a bad experience. But that we will have a look at a bit later in this video. So when you join a server then you should always look for one to which you have a very low ping. However, you might have noticed in CSGO that the ping that you see in the server browser or inside the scoreboard is always lower than what you see inside the net graph. The reason for this is that the value that you see in the server browser and the scoreboard is the ICMP echo request, while the ping in the net graph appears to be about the actual game data that is sent and received between the game server and the game client. The distance between our client and the server defines how long it takes the data to travel between them. So our lag cannot get lower than that since we would have to break the laws of physics to speed up the electrons or photons that are used to communicate with the server. What adds an extra delay on top of the travel time of our data is how frequently we send and receive it. Per default CSGO sends data 64 times per second to the server which is called the command rate. And it receives data 64 times per second from the server which is called update rate. The tick rate of the server is how many times per second it will process the data it received, run its simulations and then update the clients with new data. In games that use the source engine you usually hear that it runs at 30 ticks or 64 ticks, while other developers will tell you that their game runs at 30 hertz or 60 hertz. At the end of the day it makes no difference if you use the term tick or hertz as they both mean how many times per second something is happening. Now back to the command and update rate. Per default your client will send and receive data 64 times per second no matter if it's connected to a 64 or 128 tick server unless the admin of a 128 tick server forces the clients to use higher rates. If you want to force your client to send and receive data 128 times per second when you play on a 128 tick server then you can use the console command cl underscore cmd rate 128 and CL underscore update rate 128. You can also change these values inside of your configuration file so that these become your new default when you play on a 128 tick server. Now what kind of effect do these rates have on your lag? At a rate of 64 your data packets are 15.625 milliseconds apart. And when you increase the rate to 128 then this gap is reduced to 7.8125 milliseconds. 
So by doubling the rate at which you send and receive updates, as well as doubling the rate at which the server processes and produces data, we reduce the extra delay that is added on top of our lag that is defined by the distance between our client and the server. If you now think that this is a lot of extra effort for a rather small lag decrease, then you are right. When you go from 64 to 128, then the effect that this has on your lag is much smaller than when you go from 30 to 60. But before we have a look at the exact difference that 128 tick makes over 64 ticks, we have to check one last value that affects our lag, and that's the interpolation delay. When your client receives data from the server, then it will not use it to render a new image right after it arrived. What happens instead is that this data first goes into a buffer, where the game will then interpolate what happened in the time between these updates were sent. This is very important when you consider that some games only receive 30 or even 10 updates per second from the server, and without interpolation the movement of other players would not be smooth. Another important aspect of interpolation is that when you have packet loss and lose a packet, then the game is still able to interpolate what happens between these updates, which keeps the player animation smooth. But how big is that buffer or how long is the interpolation delay? When I began with my research, then I found a lot of topics that said that the default interpolation delay is 100 milliseconds. However, that seems to be outdated as we can see inside the game. When you open the console and type cl underscore interp, then it will return 0.03125. And since that's seconds, it means that we have an interpolation delay of 31.25 milliseconds, which we can also see here when we use netgraph3 in the console. You can try to enter a different value for the interpolation delay inside the console or inside of your configuration, but that has no effect on the value that is used. So how can we change that interpolation delay? When we type cl underscore interp underscore ratio, then the game tells us that the default value is 2, and that your client's interpolation delay is affected by your interpolation ratio and your update rate. So if we change the interpolation ratio to 1, which you can only do when you are not connected to a server, then at an update rate of 64, we get an interpolation delay of 15.6 milliseconds, which is displayed in orange, which means that we now have no protection against packet loss. When we play on a 128 tick server with an update rate of 128 and an interpolation ratio of 2, then we get an interpolation delay of 15.6 milliseconds. And with the ratio of 1, we get 7.8 milliseconds of interpolation delay, which is again displayed in orange as we have no protection against packet loss now, and the interpolation won't work when we lose packets. Now, what kind of delay do players experience when they play on the same server? In order to test this properly, I decided to rent my own CSGO server, because that way I can be sure that there are not a dozen of plugins running on the server that have a negative effect on its performance, and I could test 64 and 128 ticks on the same server, which means that I can directly compare the results. To test the delays between two players, I use a high-speed camera, two PCs where each of them has its own fiber internet connection, and a 144Hz gaming monitor on which the game runs at more than 290 frames per second. During the tests I made sure that there was no packet loss, no choke, and very little latency variation. To measure the delay between the players, I pointed my high-speed camera at the monitors, and then I had player 2 fire 20 shots. Inside the high-speed recording I then looked for the frame where I saw that player 2 fired his gun on his monitor, and then I began to count the frames until I saw the gunfire on the monitor of player 1. In addition to these gunfire tests, I also performed two movement tests. In the first one, player 2 jumps, and I count the frames until I see the player model jump on the monitor of player 1. In the second test, player 2 moves to the side and then I count the frames until I see his player model move on the monitor of player 1. All of these tests were done 20 times, which led to the following results. For the gunfire test at a tick rate of 64, with an interpolation ratio of 2 and a ping of 25 milliseconds for both players, I measured the longest delay of 62 milliseconds, an average of 54 milliseconds, and the lowest delay I measured were 44 milliseconds. When I then increased the tick rate to 128, then this slightly reduced the delays to 52, 47 and 41 milliseconds. Keep in mind that both clients were still using the default command and update rates of 64. When I then also increased these rates from 64 to 128 for both clients, then this led to a further decrease of the delay between these two players. 
Now, how much of a difference does it make when both players use an interpolation ratio of 1 instead of 2, which lowers the interpolation delay from 31.2 milliseconds to 15.6 milliseconds? With these settings, the longest measured delay was 53 milliseconds instead of 62. On average, I measured 48 instead of 54, and the lowest measured delay was 40 instead of 44. So, based on these results, decreasing your interpolation ratio will also decrease your lag, but not by much. Which turned out to be the same for the movement tests. Now, all of those delays are very low, but how do they compare to other games? On a 60Hz Battlefield 4 server, the gunfire is more delayed than in any of the CSGO tests. And the movement tests have even more delay than the gunfire. The Battlefield 1 beta at 60Hz on the other hand beats all 64 tick results from the gunfire test in CSGO, and it's actually very close to the 128 tick results. However, when it comes to the movement delays, then CSGO is clearly faster than Battlefield 1 here. And when we look at the PC version of Overwatch, which now also runs at a tick rate of 60Hz and uses update rates of 60Hz, then we see results that are very similar to those of the Battlefield 1 beta. So these tests show us that the efforts made by Blizzard and DICE did pay off, as the netcode in their games performs very good even when you compare it to Counter-Strike, which was known to have very low delays. At the end of the day, all of these games add very little additional delay on top of the data travel time that is set by the distance between the client and the server. However, there is one rather infuriating gameplay experience that all of these games share. The issue of receiving damage behind cover. When we look at Battlefield 4, then the lag compensation causes that the player will get his hit confirmed by the server as long as he has a ping of less than 250 milliseconds. Once his ping is higher than that, the server will simply reject his hit, which means that the high ping player sees the impact animation and the blood splatter, but he will not get the hit marker and his shot will not deal any damage. This is what many players refer to as dusting. So why does the server reject the hit in this situation once the shooter has more than 250 milliseconds ping? As we all know, the distance between the player and the server causes that the perspective of the server differs from the perspective of the player. How much it differs depends on how long the data needs to travel between them or how high the ping of the player is. So when the shooter has a ping of 250 milliseconds, then he sees our low ping player here, while the server sees him here and the loping player sees himself here. The server will stop to register the hit once the difference between where the server sees the target player and where the shooter sees him gets bigger than this. That happens when the ping of the shooter increases to more than 250 milliseconds in this example or when the target moves faster. Which is why Battlefield games use two different lag compensation or frame history time values. One for infantry combat and one for vehicle combat. If you would use the infantry combat lag compensation or frame history time value for vehicle combat 2, then you would get constant dusting in dogfights because jets move a lot faster than infantry players. A few of you might remember that there was a bug in Battlefield 4 last year in September which caused that exact issue. Now, how much lag does CSGO compensate for? To find out, I decided to build a small test map where player 2 will shoot at player 1 who tries to get behind cover. The first test was done at a tick rate of 64, while both players had a ping of 25 milliseconds and an interpolation ratio of 2. And in this test, player 1 received the hit at section 3. Now, CSGO does not appear to have a maximum value where it will stop to register the hit coming from a high ping player. However, if the ping of player 2 goes past 970 milliseconds, then player 1 will start to teleport. And you will also notice that the hot elements for the knife and the gun are blinking. So, at this ping, it's not really possible anymore to hit player 1. But if I keep the ping below 970 milliseconds, then player 2 does not have a problem to get this hit registered by the server. Now, what happens when we increase the tick rate as well as the update and command rate of both clients to 128? When both clients have a ping of 25 milliseconds, then player 1 receives the hit right at the beginning of sector 3, slightly earlier than in the 64 tick test, but it's an insignificant difference. Now, where's the maximum at a tick rate of 128? Well, it's not 970 milliseconds as it is at 64 ticks. At 128 ticks, it's 490 milliseconds, where player 2 will get the flickering gun and knife elements in his heart, and player 1 starts to teleport. However, with less than 490 milliseconds ping, player 2 is again able to hit player 1. 
which will then receive the damage a bit earlier than in the 64 tick test, but it does not make a significant difference. So what have we learned in this video? Your ping to the server sets how much minimum lag you will experience. The tick as well as the update rate add an additional delay on top of that. Because of this you should always look for a server to which you have a very low ping, since that has a big impact on how much lag you experience. We need lag compensation in online games or otherwise we would have constant dusting even at pings of just 15 milliseconds. However the amount of lag compensation defines how far behind cover a low ping player can be hit. When you reduce the interpolation ratio from 1 to 2 then it slightly decreases the delay, but it also removes your protection against occasional packet loss. The delay difference between 64 and 128 ticks is small, but when you play at more than 60 frames per second then you get nearly one update per frame that is drawn on your monitor, which is a factor for the competitive scene. We also learned that CSGO has very low delays at 64 and 128 ticks even when you compare it to games like Overwatch and the upcoming Battlefield 1. As I said at the beginning of this video I spent more than 60 hours on research, testing and the creation of this video with all its graphics that I built for it. I tried to be as thorough as possible, but I know that there will always be more test cases that some of you guys would have liked to see. Despite that I hope that you still enjoyed this video and if you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs and keep this channel alive by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.